Today, we're going to be learning about SST, SSR, and SSE, and what they have to do with regression. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a statistics and data science student at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and I'm really passionate about not only learning about these subjects, but as well as teaching them to you guys. So hopefully throughout these videos, you'll gain a better understanding of fundamental concepts within these subjects, and maybe learn something here and there. So if you're looking forward to this video, be sure to give it a like. So before I get into SST, SSR, and SSE, we need to start all the way at the beginning. Now let's say you had a model of data. It could be really anything. How much coffee you drank during finals week, how much Netflix you watched during this pandemic, or how many loaves of bread you've made. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have an X unit and a Y unit. So you take your data and you plot it onto a graph. And then you find your regression line. Now this line is gonna predict the value of Y. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a regression line is or regression in general, I suggest refreshing on the concept and I do have a video on that that'll be linked right over here. So now that we have our data plotted, your computer software is gonna generate a number that tells you the strength of the correlation between your data. Now this number is gonna be called R squared, your coefficient of determination. Now if your R squared is higher, that means your data has a stronger correlation. So your data is more closer together and more closely around the regression line. However, if your R squared is pretty small, that means your data is pretty spread out and doesn't have any direct pattern. In general, with regression, you want a high R squared because this R squared tells you the percent of variation in Y that can be explained by the regression on X, or in short, the percent of explained variation in the model. And R squared only tells you the strength of the correlation. It doesn't tell you the direction. Now let's say you had an R squared of 0.9 or 90%. This just tells you that 90% of the variation Y is due to the regression on X. It could be a positive correlation or a negative correlation, but the strength is 90%. So now looking at these two graphs, which do you think has a higher correlation? The one at the top or the one at the bottom? If you said the one at the top, then you're correct. You can see how the data is more closely knit together and right around the regression line. That's what you want. You don't want data that's super spread out. Now, how does a computer actually calculate this value of R squared? That's where SST, SSR, and SSE comes in. Now in regression, or really any study in statistics that you're learning, you have different forms of variation. You have your total variation, you have your explained variation, and you have your unexplained variation. So in looking at your model of data, you're gonna have your data points, your regression line, as well as Y bar, or the average of all the Y values. It's just gonna be a flat horizontal line wherever this value of Y bar is. So this total variation accounts for anything and everything in the model. It could be the amount of blocks you use, your explanatory variables, your error, your residuals, really anything that can be considered a variable in the model. So now mathematically, this total variation is gonna be the sum of squared distance from all your Y values to your Y bar. So if you just take your pencil or pen and draw lines from every Y value to Y bar, you find that distance, then you square that distance and sum it up, that is gonna be your total variation in the model. Then we have our explained variation. This explained variation is anything that you can confidently say is due to the regression model itself. So these are your explanatory factors, the blocks you use, or anything that is from the model itself. So mathematically, it's gonna be the distance from all our predicted Y values to our Y bar. And the reason we square these values is because some distances are gonna be negative, and in order to get rid of the negative, we need to square it. Otherwise, we're just gonna end up with positive numbers and negative numbers, and ultimately they'll cancel out. So we square them in order to get rid of the negative. So then we have unexplained variation, and it's exactly that. It's variation that we don't know where it's coming from. This variation can be from chance, randomness, error, just really anything we can't really control. So mathematically, your unexplained variation is gonna be the sum of squared distance from your y values to your y hat values. So what do you notice here? Well, you can see here that your total variation is pretty much made up of your unexplained variation and your explained variation. So no matter how big or small your total variation is, it's always gonna be a combination of your unexplained variation and your explained variation. And this is exactly where SST, SSR, and SSC come into. Your total variation is gonna be SST, your explained variation is gonna be SSR, and your unexplained variation is gonna be SSE. So now, depending where you learn statistics, it can be called different things. So just note that the general formula is total variation is equal to explained variation plus unexplained variation, where explained variation is due to the regression model and unexplained variation is your error. Okay, so now that you know this formula, you know that if you have two out of the three numbers, you can easily find the third. So let's suppose our SST was 121 and our SSR was 87. What would our SSE be? So you just take 121 minus 87 and you would end up with your SSE, 34 in this case. 
Okay, so now what does this all have to do with R squared? Well, R squared is a percent. Remember, it's a percent of explained variation in the model. And a percent always boils down to a fraction. So how do we get this previous formula into terms of a fraction? Well, if R squared is gonna be the percent of explained variation out of the total variation, then our total variation needs to be the denominator. So let's take SST, our total variation, and divide it among both sides. So on the left side, we have 121 over 121. And this just simplifies down to one. And then we have our SSR over SST, in this case, 87 over 121. And then we have our SSC over SST, in this case, 34 over 121. Okay, so now we have two fractions. Now take a guess, which one do you think is R squared? If you said the SSR over SST, then that was correct. The percent of explained variation in our regression model. So you can see that the percent of explained variation plus the percent of unexplained variation in the model is gonna add up to one. So if we boil down these numbers to decimals, we end up with 0.719 and 0.2809. And if we add them up, plus some extra decimals here and there, we end up with a number of one. And you can convert these numbers to percents by just multiplying them by 100. So either way, these two fractions are gonna add up to one, or these two percents are gonna add up to 100%. So hopefully you're following the pattern here. So now if both of these numbers are gonna add up to one or 100%, if you have one of the numbers, you're gonna have the other. Okay, before we move on, I want you to pause the screen and make sure you can answer these questions. Okay, so hopefully you're more clear about what's going on. Now let's do some conceptual questions. So if we had a high R squared, what do you expect our graph to look like? Make a guess and draw it down. And also, do you expect SSR or SSC to be bigger? So if you had a high R squared, our graph would look something like this. You can see that our data is more close together and more closely knit around the regression line. So if our R squared is super high, let's say super close to SST, that means our SSR over SST is gonna be really close to 100%. So if our R squared is really high, what does it leave a percent of unexplained variation to be? Well, that would just be zero. So if a percent of unexplained variation is zero, then that means our SSE is zero. So the higher our R squared, the higher our SSR is, and the lower our SSE is. And that makes sense because our residuals are smaller. Our residuals are smaller because our data points are more close together around the regression line. So now let's do the opposite. What if our SSE was super high? Well, if our SSE, our unexplained variation, was really, really high, then that leaves our R squared to be really low. And if our R squared was really low, say close to zero, then that means our SSR is gonna be close to zero. And that makes sense because our data is all over the place, our regression line makes no sense, and there's no really correlation between anything. Okay, now knowing those last two things, what is the range of R squared? The lowest it can go is zero. It can't be a negative number because it's a sum of squared values, and if you square anything, it's gonna be a positive number. And it can't be higher than 100% because your percent of explained variation, R squared, plus the percent of unexplained variation has to add up to one or 100%. So the range of R squared is gonna be between zero and one or zero and 100%. So that wraps up this video. Hopefully that all made sense and you're pretty much clear on about what SST, SSR, and SSE is and the relationship to R squared and regression. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and comment down below any other videos you'd like to see. Bye.